Hello, let's talk a bit about character lighting. The basics that I will be explaining are working for film, photography, painting and of course 3D. However, we will be working in Unreal Engine and with the lovely MetaHumans to demonstrate these methods. So here you can see my setup I prepared for this tutorial. Here the final shot with an 85mm lens, a 3D view of a scene, a top view and a side view so you can easily see where a certain light is. A classic approach to character lighting, but also lighting in general, is the three-point lighting. You can see that I already set those three lights up in my rig. I'm now gonna turn them off and just start with my main light or key light. This is, as the name says, our main light and most important for our setup, primarily defining the look of our scene. Now to the fill light. Its purpose is to brighten up our shadows that our key casts. And therefore we will position the fill on the other side of a character's face in most cases. As we don't want the fill to produce shadows of its own, it is mostly a very soft light and in lesser intensity than our key light. This intensity defines the contrast ratio of our portrait and how soft the light is depends on the size and distance uh, of a light source to the lit object. Of course, same goes for our main light. Look at the shadows in the character's face getting harder or softer by increasing or decreasing the size of the light source. Rim light. You know, there are other variations of backlighting like a kicker, or an edge light or a hair light. But we will now talk about a simple rim light that separates a character from the background and to give him or her or it more depth and shape. A fellow photographer, Wolfgang Bohusch, once told me that he often starts his studio lighting with the rim light in order to see if his scene is recognizable just by its shape or silhouette. And only then he starts adding other lights to the scene. So of course a rim light has to come from behind the character. You have plenty of room to play there. I mean, you can even place it right behind in the middle of a character. But right now I will go back to the basic setting. Okay, lighting setups. These are of course just some. There are many setups, but I dare say that these are the very basics and the other ones are some adaptations or variations or just a bit more fancy, but to build up on the following basics. We maybe we'll get to them in another video. Flat lighting. Here we have the light in front of a character or better set from camera angle. As in real scenarios, the actor is not always looking straight into the camera. The face is evenly lit. There are no shadows and any texture or skin will appear very clean as the light from camera direction will fill any shadows or imperfections. On the other hand, that face might not show that much depth or dimension. This flawless face lighting is very common in fashion or beauty photography. Now we go a bit higher with a light and we see that there is a little shadow under the nose in the shape of a butterfly. Butterfly lighting, or sometimes called a Paramount lighting, because they used it very often back in the days at Paramount Studios. As the flat lighting before, this is a bit of a feminine setup. You can see that it brings out uh, or distinguishes the cheekbones. Still, it covers a lot of imperfections in the skin. Let's go a bit to the left or the right in our case. Sometimes you want the light at least when you play absolutely by the book from reading direction. So from left to right. In my case, I decide to do it the opposite way. Now we have a bit of a loopy shadow from the nose. This is called the loop lighting. And it works very well for round faces to create a thinner look as the shadows on the darker side make a face seem longer or thinner. Thin. Thinner. Ah, it's not working. Here for an absolute classic, the Rembrandt lighting, named after the famous painter or even called the three quarter lighting. The basic way to achieve this is to position your light in a 45 degree angle away from the camera and 45 degree to the top as you can see here. You recognize this look by a triangle of light you get in the darker side of the character's face when the shadow of the nose and that of the cheek unite. This is a very dramatic and mysterious look and is often used for men.
Next one is a split lighting. We come from the side of the character and that way we light up just one side of the face. This is a very twisted and dramatic look. Of course we can dial up the fill light to reduce the contrast ratio and therefore the drama in the lighting a bit. Lighting from the side gives skin the most texture. Finally we have top lighting. Be aware of the famous raccoon eyes. Or maybe you want them. I mean it worked for Marlon Brando. What I like most about top lighting is that if you are close enough with the light to the character, you have a strong light fall off, giving focus to the face and it's a bit like a vignette for the rest of the body. The closer you are to a light source, the stronger the fall off. This physical law is called the inversive square law and I absolutely recommend looking into that. Alright, I promised you a secret ingredient in my clickbait thumbnail. So here it comes. When the light is shining on the side of the face closer to the camera, it is called broadside lighting, giving us a bit of an upbeat feeling and makes the face seem brighter, less shadowy and a bit broad. Now to the magic. When the light comes from the side of the face further away from the camera, this is called short lighting. We have way more depth and dimension in this style. Also, the character seems a bit thinner. Short side for a thinner short face and broad side for a broad face. That's how you can easily remember the names. When you watch movies and it's a bit more about serious business, you will see a lot of short lighting and for me, it is an easy and essential ingredient to produce dramatic and cinematic lighting. So, these are some basic settings. What I love most about lighting is how your tell or just support telling a story. You know, a picture can say more than a thousand words, they say. Well, one can argue about that, but I think a picture always should have a meaning or tell a story or support your character or emotions and the same goes for your light. It's not simply a question of aesthetics, which lighting you choose. It depends on what you want to express. There's so much more cool stuff I hope I can talk to you about in the future. Questions in the commentaries are very welcome. Thanks a lot for your attention. Be nice to each other and I hope we'll meet again.